mean energy of a system with two discrete energy levels. A system consists of capital N weakly interacting particles, each of which can be in either one of the two states with respective energies epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 1 is less than epsilon 2. Without explicit calculation, make a qualitative plot of the mean energy E bar of the system as a function of its absolute temperature. What is E bar in the limit of very low and very high temperatures? Roughly near what temperature does E bar change from its low to high temperature limiting values? Find an explicit expression for the mean energy of the system. Verify that this expression exhibits the temperature dependence established qualitatively in A. So we will do it explicitly. So we're talking about an energy with two discrete, uh, a system with two discrete energy levels. These have energies epsilon 1 and epsilon 2 such that epsilon 2 is greater than epsilon 1. And we would like to know qualitatively how E bar behaves as a function of temperature. So that is the question. So uh, let's start with part A. Uh, now, at a very low temperature, what would happen? Uh, you would have uh, the uh, particles not having enough energy to be excited to epsilon 2. So I would expect that, so starting from the low temperature uh, limit, uh, at a very low temperature, I would expect that uh, all particles to occupy the lowest energy state. Uh, so this means that uh, as t goes to zero, I would expect that the mean value of the energy uh, to be uh, approaching capital N times epsilon 1 because they don't have enough energy to be excited to the uh, energy level epsilon 2. So this is because uh, not enough energy, thermal energy available thermal energy available for excitations. So uh, this is the first answer I have. In the low temperature limit, I find it, I would expect that it would be n times epsilon 1. Now let's discuss the high temperature limit. Uh, so in the high temperature limit, I know that the probability of occupancy of uh, the level 2 uh, divided by the probability of occupancy of level 1 will vary as e to the minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1. So I would find that in the high temperature limit beta which is 1 over kT will be approaching uh, 0 which means the ratio of the probabilities p2 to p1 should be approaching 1. Uh, therefore, uh, we expect a equal number of particles in the two energy levels. So that means that we would expect E bar to approach as T goes to infinity, we would expect E bar to approach capital N uh, epsilon 1, capital N over 2, epsilon 1 plus epsilon 
two. So uh, just half way in between the, the two energy levels, epsilon one and epsilon two. And note that this corresponds to the, uh, the most random, so that is the most random uniform distribution at this very high uh, temperature. Okay, and I can see that explicit distance, the ratio of the probabilities is going to 1 as the temperature uh, goes to infinity. So these are the two limits, high temperature limit and low temperature limit. Now I can uh, roughly sketch uh, where, uh, so what this would look like. So you can see that the mean energy of the system as a function of temperature, it would uh, start from uh, epsilon capital N times epsilon 1 and then it would be approaching capital N over 2 epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 half of the particles in, in level 2 and half of the particles in level 1. So this is my uh, asymptotic limit as the temperature goes to infinity. So I would find that uh, it will roughly start from an epsilon 1 and it will approach uh, asymptotically uh, n over 2 epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2. Now, uh, where does this transition occur? So roughly near what temperature does E bar change from its low to its uh, high temperature uh, limiting values. Well, when uh, the energy difference delta E epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 is equal to the thermal energy KT, uh, we have the thermal energy uh, matches the energy difference. There will be a significant uh, transitions. to so higher energy level epsilon 1, epsilon 2. So you would uh, basically, if you draw these energy levels, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, so we have the difference in these two energy levels, delta epsilon, uh, so if kt is of the order of uh, delta epsilon, uh, then we would have uh, significant transitions uh, to the higher energy level. So that's uh, what we're talking about here. So uh, that means uh, you would have epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 roughly equal to kt or the temperature would be roughly equal to epsilon 2 min o minus epsilon 1 divided by k. So this is where you have significant transitions when delta epsilon is of the order of uh, kt. Okay, so I can uh, show that here. So this would be roughly here. Uh, where the temperature is of the order of epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 over the Boltzmann constant, k. Okay, so in part b, I want to do this explicitly. Now, uh, the probability of occupancy of level 2 is c times e to the minus beta epsilon 2. Remember, this is the number of accessible states in the level 2 divided by total number of accessible states. And the probability of occupancy of level 1 is, again, c times e to the minus beta epsilon 1. And these probabilities should add up to uh, 1. So c times e to the minus beta epsilon 1 plus e to the minus beta epsilon 2 uh, should be equal to 1. So I find that 
the constant C is uh, 1 over e to the minus beta epsilon 1 plus e to the minus beta epsilon 2. And remember, we define this as the partition function e to the minus beta epsilon 1 plus e to the minus beta epsilon 2 is our partition function. Then how do we calculate the mean energy of the system? The mean energy of the system is uh, the probability of occupancy of level 1 times epsilon 1 plus probability of occupancy of level 2 times epsilon 2 multiplied by the number of particles. So it's the number of particles times the mean energy per particle and capital N times epsilon bar. So uh, if we write this explicitly, this would be equal to epsilon 1 e to the minus beta epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 e to the minus beta epsilon 2 divided by uh, the partition function e to the minus beta epsilon 1 plus e to the minus beta epsilon 2. So you can see that this is of the form uh, capital multiplied by n of course capital N uh, divided by the partition function z and uh, what I have on top is minus del z del beta and this is also of the form minus n del uh, ln z del beta so that is the mean energy of the system um, so it can also be written this way all right so uh, therefore we obtain uh, the mean energy of the system E bar. Now I would like to uh, divide top and bottom with E to the minus beta epsilon 1. So this would be capital N uh, uh, epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 E to the minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 and at the bottom I have 1 plus e to the minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1. So this is basically written in terms of the difference between the energy levels. Now I'm ready to check a few limits here. Uh, as the temperature approaches 0, what happens to beta? beta is going to be, uh, be approaching infinity because remember uh, beta is 1 over kt so uh, since uh, we have epsilon 2 greater than epsilon 1 e to the minus beta delta epsilon which is epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 that's a positive number, will be approaching zero. So that means the E bar value will be approaching, um, let's, let's say that it will be approaching capital N times epsilon one plus zero over one plus zero, which is capital N times epsilon one, as expected. Now, as the temperature uh, goes to infinity the beta value will be approaching zero so you would have uh, e bar approaching in that case capital N times epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 e to the zero and 1 plus uh, e to the 0. So this would give us uh, capital N times uh, epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 divided by 2. So that is also the same limit I observe here. And for significant transitions, 
for significant uh, transitions, I would have e to the minus uh, beta epsilon 1 term, the probability uh, of occupancy of level 1, uh, approaching e to the minus beta epsilon 2 or e to the minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 approaching 1. So <coughs> if you look at uh, the beta times epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 as t goes to infinity uh, this is becoming no, not at t goes to infinity. So uh, this term is basically uh, um, approaching zero here. So because I have uh, e to the zero is one, so this is approaching uh, zero. Uh, and therefore, if you have e to the x, so it's actually minus beta epsilon two minus epsilon one approaching zero. So we have this uh, e to the x for x much less than 1, the Taylor series expansion. This is uh, the first few terms are 1 plus x. So e to the minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 is basically 1 minus epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 over uh, kt. So that I have the, this uh, approaching 1 or uh, while it's approaching 1, it's approaching as 1 minus epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 over uh, kt. So if this is equal to uh, if, if this is equal to 0, then you would have uh, 1 is equal to epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 over kt or t is equal to epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 over k. So that would be uh, the point where I would have a, tra a significant transition between the two uh, levels. So, okay, so for a significant transition, these exponential terms should be roughly the same. So e to the minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 should be approaching 1, which means the, uh, the top term minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 uh, should be approaching uh, 0. So uh, you would have in this limit e to the x is basically how does it approach uh, e, how does e to the x approach 1 or x approaches 0? So you would have 1 plus x. So it, it, it approaches as uh, 1 plus x. So 1 minus epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 over kt is equal to uh, the e to the minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1. So if you have uh, this approaching uh, 0, uh, we have one limit. If it approaches one, we have the other limit. So we have uh, this quantity while it's approaching uh, one. Uh, if one minus epsilon two minus epsilon one over kt is approaching zero, so we have this uh, basically halfway in between these two limits, and that was that will correspond to temperature of epsilon two minus epsilon one over k. Okay, so that's what we have said here also. When delta E corresponds to the thermal energy KT, we would have uh, significant transitions between these two energy levels. So we have basically verified all the answers we gave to part A using an explicit calculation. So once again, we're talking about capital N weakly interacting particles. They all have energies epsilon 1, epsilon 2, two discrete levels. There is no degeneracy here. No degeneracy. We, we just have two energy levels. And you know that the probability of occupancy of level 2 is proportional to e to the minus beta epsilon 2. And for level 1, e to the minus beta epsilon 1. So, uh, 
qualitatively at a very low temperature the particles would not have enough energy to be excited to epsilon 2 level so they would all be occupying epsilon 1 the mean energy would be approaching capital M epsilon 1 in the high temperature limit the probability of occupancy of the two levels would be approaching each other and then you would have uh, equal number of particles in level 2 and level 1 so that the mean value of the energy would be capital N over 2 epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 which is our most random or uniform distribution and when is this uh, the question was roughly near what temperature does E bar change from its low to its high temperature limiting value so that is roughly in in the middle of this these two limits and that would correspond to an energy uh, transition uh, the, the 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 level the difference between the levels the transition uh, the the energy required to do the transition from level one to level two is of the order of the thermal energy so that means that would mean epsilon two minus epsilon one over k as uh, the critical temperature where I have the transition between the two limits and if I do this calculation explicitly the mean value is probability of occupancy of level 1 times epsilon 1 plus probability of occupancy of level 2 times epsilon 2 times n so it is n times epsilon bar is the mean energy of the total mean energy of the system epsilon bar is mean energy per particle and using the normalization condition we find that the uh, proportionality constant c is 1 over the partition function so remember this is our partition function and here i have explicitly verified that the mean energy is actually minus capital n del ln z del beta so uh, that's the explicit expression so you can look at as what happens as t goes to zero since you have beta is one over kt that would approach infinity and so i have divided top and bottom of the e bar with e to the minus beta epsilon one so epsilon two is greater than epsilon one e to the minus beta delta epsilon would be approaching zero then you would have capital n times epsilon one as the answer as t goes to infinity beta would be approaching zero then you would have capital n times epsilon one plus epsilon two e to the zero divided by one plus e to the zero so that would be the high temperature limit the same limit that we have found and for significant transitions the probability of occupancy e to the beta epsilon one should be roughly approaching e to the minus beta epsilon two so that means you would have e to the minus beta epsilon two minus epsilon one approaching one so that means you have a very low value for minus beta epsilon two minus epsilon one that's approaching zero and i've looked at how it approaches zero it goes as uh, the taylor series trans uh, expansion e to the x is one plus x so it would be approaching as one minus epsilon two minus epsilon one over kt but i also want it to be equal to the other limit uh, so that would be uh, when e to the uh, minus beta delta epsilon is uh, zero uh, so, or, or in, i would have uh, e to the minus beta epsilon two minus one equals to zero then that's that's the limit where i would obtain ca capital n times epsilon one remember so uh, that would mean one minus epsilon two minus one epsilon one divided by kt is equal to zero so temperature is epsilon two minus epsilon one over uh, k temperature is th this is the critical temperature where i have this transition so basically first i looked at uh, the limit where e to the minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 is approaching 0 and then i uh, looked at e to the minus beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 is approaching uh, 1 uh, and 0 so i looked at the limit when uh, it's approaching 1 it's going to be approaching as 1 minus uh, beta epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 but then I want it to be equal to zero uh, so be, because I have these 
the transition between the two ranges. So that gives me the critical temperature epsilon 2 minus epsilon 1 over K.